and today I'm going to do the review on a 1994 Epiphone Les Paul Double Cutaway. Show you what these things are all about. They're starting to get old now. This is about, uh, let's see, it's about 29 years old, this guitar now. This was a Texas Hill Country Pawn Shop find from six years ago that I got for $150. The guitar is all original with the original pickups, even has the original pots. The only thing I did was it had a broken input jack plate. The plastic plate was broken, so I put a chrome-plated steel one and a uh, new jack. And I used 50 steel braided wiring to that jack, and I think I put in some orange drop caps that I had at the time. Uh, I didn't change the pots because they were functioning and I did not have the standard threaded uh, knobs to fit CTS pots at the moment. So I just left them. So that's something that I'll be replacing down the road. But so the guitar is made in Korea. I showed you in the pictures before this. It's in pretty good shape. So the reason why I've done this video is because these guitars have shot up in price. This is a kind of a hard to find Epiphone guitar for sure. And they were going for four to five hundred dollars, but now I'm seeing them when they're listed for more like seven hundred bucks. So some of you, if you've seen that, may be wondering, are these worth it? So the point of this video is to give you the answer to that question. Is this guitar worth paying six, seven hundred dollars for? Okay, so I'm going to start off playing what I like to play on this guitar. I found that these are great for slide playing. So I'm going to be using this uh, Carbon XV112E using the Dirty Channel. And I have a Archer overdrive pedal. I will kick that in at some point. And I also will use a little bit of the MXR carbon copy analog delay. I'll kick that on near the end. Um, I'm tuned to open E. All right, so let's hit her here.
Okay, now I got it back in standard tuning. I'm just going to doodle around a little bit and go through the selector switch, show you the tones on the clean channel. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to play some rhythm on the uh, overdrive channel right now. And uh, I'll just probably dirty it up a little bit here with the Archer so we can get the full effects. I don't have this cranked right now. I got a daughter home from college studying and all that jazz. Wife home. And you're going to hear a little bit of buzzing from the amp because I live off grid and I have solar. And I have a generator for backup, and I'm running that generator right now because it's so cloudy. Uh, it's been, like, cloudy all summer. So I think most of my videos I'm running off of the generator. Listen up, kitties. Solar's not all what they say it is. two cents worth so let's go over this so it's made 1994 in South Korea at the Samick guitar factory well those are known for pumping out pretty good guitars so I like to always start with the body so they have pieced together five pieces of mahogany for the body they've got a just like a little sliver on each side so one two and then it's like three, four, and five. And some of it is matched okay in some kind of so-so. But this, this cherry stain on it and the finish, man, it's, it's gorgeous. I mean, this guitar is a little worn. But everybody that sees this guitar in person, oh, they, they love it. They're like, this is beautiful. And then it's got a scarf joint right here on the neck, typical. And then, you know, these tuners, well, they're the original and they, they, they still work. <laughs> they still hold tune. So, you know, we can't slander those at all. Um, and these pickups are low output. I think they measure... 
I think it was like 5.6 lead and 5.4 on the neck. So they're much lower output than Gibson P90s. And then you've got a rosewood fingerboard. So it's all just pretty standard stuff for one of these double cutaways. Um, so the difference between this old Korean Epiphone and the new like Chinese ones is when I grab a hold of this guitar it kind of feels more like a Gibson. They really, you know, I mean, I didn't get this guitar when it was new, so I don't know. But I don't think anyone did anything to it. This guitar came with no case, and it had a lot of bangs, and there was, like, virtually no fretware. So that tells me whoever had it was, like, a beginner. They are just somebody that just didn't play the guitar, but I think it was a beginner. It hardly got played. There was no case, so it got banged around. Could have been a younger kid, you know. Um, so I don't think anybody leveled frets or anything like that. Now, I didn't have to do any of that. I All I did is, you know, mess with some electronics on here, like I said earlier. So it's got a great neck feel. It just, the whole guitar plays really well. It's very easy to play. It feels great. It just feels solid. I mean, all guitars are solid, but, you know, when you pick up a really good guitar, like a really high-end Gibson, it's just got this certain feel, and this guitar gets there closer than some of these new Epiphones. That's just my opinion, and maybe that's just this one that I got. But um, back to the price these are going for, uh, I don't think you could find something along this line for under the six seven hundred bucks people are asking for these guitars now so if you want one of these I would recommend paying that price now of course I would want to play the guitar first I always want to play the guitar first when it's used I will blindly buy anything brand new from these big guitar box stores but used I, I like to you know go check it out in person I, I don't think I've I think I've maybe bought one guitar before used without having it in my hands so uh, that's about all I have on this guitar here I like it a lot if you can find one of these and you're in the market for one of these you may really want to consider all right, so this is Ron of Mount Rock signing off for now. I hope you all have a great rest of your weekend. And rock on.